Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be presenting on the analysis and results of our study. Our study seeks to examine the factors that affect cognitive engagement and emotional engagement of students in blended learning at African Development University in Niger. For the purpose of this study, the study looks at the demographic characteristics of the respondents. It shows how heterogeneous our sample is as a representation of our population. The study went ahead to look at the gender of its respondents. 17. Seventy percent of the respondents are female and 30 percent of the respondents are females. In terms of the age of the respondent, 38 of the respondents find themselves within the age bracket of 19 to 22 years of age. 11 respondents find themselves between 23 to 26 years of age. Then three respondents find themselves below 18 years of age. The study went ahead to look at the courses that is being studied at African Development University. In African Development University, there are four main courses, accounting, project management, law, and information technology. We had eight respondents opting for accounting, 16 doing project management, 16 doing law, and nine offering information technology. We asked our respondents their preferred mode of delivery, whether face-to-face -face interaction or online or remote learning. About 71.4% of the students indicated that they wanted or they prefer face-to-face -face interaction to online or remote form of learning. We went ahead to look at the scholarship status of respondents. 84% of students of the respondent are on scholarship, while 16% are not on scholarship. We, had, we went ahead to look at the parent education of respondents. We found out that 25% of the respondents' parents have tertiary education, whereby 13, 13 of the respondents have basic education, then nine respondents have secondary form of education. We use the structural equation model to analyze the factors that influence cognitive and emotional engagement of students in a blended learning environment. For using SEM, we have two key measures. That's the measurement model validity and that of the structural model assessment. For the measurement model validity, it looks at the relationship that exists between the construct and its indicators. Self-regulation, language proficiency, technology proficiency, course design, emotional engagement, cognitive engagement are reflective constructs, whereby composite reliability and average variance extracted are used to test for the reliability and convergent validity of the model. For composite reliability, basically it's looking at how reliable our constructs for the model are and whether it can be replicated. The rule of thumb for the composite reliability states that the values for the constructs of the model should be greater than 0 0.7. And from the table, we find out that our construct, which is self-regulation, language proficiency, technology proficiency, course design, emotional engagement, and cognitive engagement, have a composite reliability value which is greater than 0 0.7. That is to say that our construct for the model meet the composite reliability test. The average variance extracted it's looking at how uniform our average, our constraints are. The rule of thumb says that our average variance extracted should be less, greater than 0 0.5. And we find out that our self-regulation, language proficiency, technology proficiency, course design, emotional engagement, and cognitive engagement, it values the average variance extracted is greater than 0 0.5. That is to say that our construct for the model meet both the reliability and the validity test. However, there is one key test for the validity test, which is the discriminant validity. That is looking at how distinct and unique our construct for the model are from each other. One of the instruments to measure this discriminant validity is that is the hetero trait and mono traits correlation criteria. Yeah which says that the value for the ATMT should be less than 0 
we find out that our constraint for the model, which is auditive engagement, cost design, emotional engagement, language proficiency, self-regulation and technology proficiency, all of these values are less than 0.85. That is showing that it meets the satisfactory discriminant validity test. So we find out that in terms of the measurement model validation, all our constraints for the model meet the required test that has to be, this construct has to be tested for. We'll move ahead to look at the structural model assessment. With the structural model assessment, it's basically looking at how, it's looking at the estimates of the path coefficient and the coefficient of determination of the various constructs. So with the coefficient of determination, which is also known as the R square, it's looking at the explanatory power of the dependent variable based on the independent variables. So we find out that 37.7% of self-regulation, language proficiency, technology proficiency, and course design are explained cognitive engagement. In terms of emotional engagement of students, 26.4% is being explained by self-regulation, language proficiency, technology proficiency, and course design. For simplicity's sake, we are going to look at the factors that affect cognitive engagement. Self-regulation affects cognitive engagement by 0.262, which is significant at 5%. This is to show that the ability of students to set tasks for themselves and to be very conscious of their studies engage students cognitively. In terms of language proficiency, we realize that language proficiency of students affect cognitive engagement by 0.144, which is significant by 10%. That is to say that the ability of students to understand, speak and write in the language of instruction have an effect on the ability to coordinate or engage cognitively in the classroom. With technology proficiency, it looks at basically the ability of students to source for resources online and also for them to use the learning management system. We found out that technology proficiency affects cognitive engagement by 0.232, which is significant at 10%. With course design, course design is basically looking at how interactive and the ability to allow students to express their views during class interaction. We found out that course design influenced cognitive engagement by 0.314, which is significant at 5%. We move ahead to look at factors that affect emotional engagement. Self-regulation affects emotional engagement by 0.113. However, it's not significant. That is to say that the ability of students to set goals for themselves doesn't necessarily necessary to their being happy in being a blended learning environment. With language proficiency, the ability of students to speak, write, and understand in the language of instruction affect emotional engagement by 0.264, which is significant at 5%. That is to say that the ability of students to speak and understand or write in the language of instruction makes them feel happy whereby they tend to interact very well in the classroom environment. With technology proficiency, the ability of students to search for material online and to use the learning management system affect emotional engagement by 0.303, which is significant at 5%. That is to say that the ability of students to use technology in the blended learning environment makes them happy and they're always curious to learn something new in the environment they find themselves. With course design, course design affects emotional engagement by 0.041. However, it's not significant. That is to say that the nature of the course design has, doesn't really affect the emotional engagement of students. Let's look at the summary of the hypothesis test we did mentioned in the literature review. We find out that out of the eight hypotheses that was tested, Six of them are supported and two are not supported. These studies tend to explore the factors that affect student cognitive engagement in a blended learning environment. To conclude, we find out that self-regulation, language proficiency, technology proficiency, and course design affect the cognitive engagement of students. In terms of emotional engagement, we find out that 
the ability of students to speak, write, and read in the language of instruction tends to affect them emotionally. And also, technology proficiency also have a way of affecting emotional engagement in the ability of using technology in their studies. Based on the findings of our studies, we realize that self-regulation is very significant to the cognitive engagement of students. Instructors should try as much as possible to encourage self-regulation among students, to enable students to set goals to increase their cognitive engagement in the learning process. Course design has been noted to play a critical role in cognitive engagement. So, instructors should improve course design to encourage student activity, active participation, and the freedom for students to express themselves in a blended learning environment. Our study went ahead to find out that technology and language proficiency is very key to the, emotion, to the student engagement. So, administrators should try as much as possible to conduct technology and language training to enhance student proficiency and improve overall engagement of students in a blended learning environment. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Please, questions and suggestions are welcome. Okay. So, when you pray, your question is how does the study contribute to practice and knowledge? So, this study contributes to practice and knowledge that is informing educators and educational administrators on how best to engage students in a blended learning environment. So, for educators, should try as much as possible to encourage students to self, set self-regulation uh, goals, whereby they are very conscious and intentional about their learning. Also, for administrators, they should try as much as possible to focus on training in technology and language. But from our study, we realized that language and technology is very key to engagement of students. So the best way for them to do is to try as much as possible that students are competent enough to be able to use the learning management system and also the language of instruction. Because it's pointless whereby a teacher is teaching you in a language whereby you don't understand. How do you even appreciate what the teacher is saying? Let alone to even ask questions and be happy coming to the classroom. Another thing is that course designs to people who design curricula for courses, they should try as much as possible that it's project-based and very engaging. At least teachers or educators should try as much as possible to include presentations or educational videos in delivery of their courses, whereby it will engage them as much as possible. Thank you. So over here, in African Development University, we use French and English in teaching and learning. So in our study, we are focused on both French and English because that's a medium of instruction being used in African University. Though they are uh, French speaking, though the people of Nigeria are French speaking country, it has noticed that their level of French is more conversational. So it's best for them to be able to use the French and English in academic writing and instead it's best that we improve their competence in both English and French. Thank you very much, Winifred. As of right now, we don't have uh, any more questions uh, that we can end this session. Okay, okay. Thanks very much. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you too.